Good morning, and welcome to the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass on the feast day of St. Andrew the Apostle. Our Mass this morning is being offered for the intentions of Mike Sable. Please stand for the opening antiphon. Beside the Sea of Galilee, the Lord saw two brothers, Peter and Andrew, and he said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fall, through my fall, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. We humbly implore your majesty, O Lord, that just as the blessed apostle Andrew was for your church a preacher and pastor, so he may be for us a constant intercessor before you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and, is, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. There is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how can they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone to preach? And how can people preach unless they are sent? As it is written, 
How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. But not everyone has heeded the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what was heard from us? Thus faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. But I ask, did they not hear? Certainly they did, for their voice has gone forth to all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. The word of the Lord. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold. Sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. me, says the Lord, and I will make you fishers of men. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Andrew emulates a particular virtue that I myself have come to realize that I often struggle with. Don't worry, don't get your hopes up, it's nothing that juicy or scandalous. But... Um, this virtue is being able to bring someone to Christ, to present them before Christ through evangelization, and then step back and let Christ take over. Recognizing that the work of evangelization is Christ's work first, and we are simply the tools or the instruments of that work. For my part, I always kind of struggle with that last part of letting go of the situation and trusting it to Christ. And try, uh, as opposed to holding on to control and trying to do it all myself. But at the end of the day, we have to recognize, like St. Andrew recognizes, that the work of evangelization is the work of grace. It's Christ at work in the person. It's not our work ourselves. St. Andrew is known as the one who kind of presents people to Christ. And that... Um, Admittedly, we don't see the scene itself, per se, in the Gospel, but the scene after this, Andrew fetches Simon and brings him to Jesus and says, we have found the Messiah, and then steps back and let Jesus interact with Peter. 
thus establishing that relationship between Christ and the rock. We see it a little bit in the uh, first reading with talking about how the message has to be preached. We are simply the messengers. Christ is the message. That which has to be planted has to take root and allow the growth to take its natural course. In our work of evangelization, we have to recognize that we uh, encounter people at various stages of their journey. We're not going to be the ones, or at least in 99% of the cases, we're not going to be the ones to start, work, and finish the project of evangelization. There's an adage within that uh, mission of evangelization called uh, saying we're scattering seeds. And I both like and dislike that phrase. I like it because obviously it gets to the heart of the matter. But at the same time, it kind of, it's restricting. We're not always the ones initiating the seeds. We're not the ones scattering the seeds in every case. At other times, we might meet someone midway through their journey. We might be the gardeners tending the sprout or pruning the leaves or something like that. Or, as is the case with priests, more often than not, we might be the ones kind of at the final stage of it, the harvesters, reaping the fruit, having not really done much of the work of evangelization per se. We meet people at various stages, but the end goal should be the same, regardless of what stage we encounter the person at. That we let Christ have control of the situation. We allow ourselves to cooperate with that grace, to bring the person closer to Christ. But ultimately, we cede control of the interaction, we cede control of the encounter to Christ, rather than trying to do everything ourselves by our own wisdom and our own efforts. The more we try to hold on to that control, the more frustrated and the less success we will have. The, but the more we let Christ take control of the situation, let Christ be the one who speaks in us and through us and works through us. The greater fruit we will bear for the harvest, the greater success we will encounter, and the greater joy and peace we will have in that encounter. So in all things, whether we're talking actual direct evangelization, whether it's working over at St. Vincent de Paul, or any ministry that we are engaged in, let Christ take the wheel. Or at the very least, let Christ share the wheel, as odd an image as that might be. Cede control to Christ. Entrust the ministry, the encounter, whatever it might be, to Christ. Allow, him, and allow yourself to cooperate with his grace so that we might in receive the greatest success and bear the most fruit for Christ and his church. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Seeking to answer the Lord's call in our lives, let us offer him our prayers. For the church, as we celebrate the feast of St. Andrew, may the Holy Spirit lead all Christians to unity and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For government leaders, may God strengthen them in their work of upholding the, di the dignity and sanctity of human life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are sick or suffer from depression or anxiety, in this, especially in this time of lockdown and isolation, may Christ's love and compassion be their consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. For guests and visitors to this faith community in this Advent season, may Christ pour out his blessings upon them during their time with us. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially those we continue to remember during the, the last bits of this month of the dead, may the risen Christ welcome them into the fullness of life. Let us pray to the Lord. 
And now let us take a moment to present our own needs and petitions in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, as we celebrate the example of St. Andrew, we ask you to hear our prayers and answer them in accordance with your holy will. We ask all this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Almighty God, that through these offerings which we bring on the feast day of St. Andrew, we may please you by what we have brought and be given life by what you have accepted through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father. Almighty and eternal God, for you, eternal shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and pro- protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name, name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, And with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabao, Plenis Uncele et Terra, Gloria Tua. Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine domini. Hosanna in excelsis. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. 
together with your servant Francis our Pope and Ronald our Bishop and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember Lord your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to you, O God, his Almighty Father, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, open your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, 
Bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On your stay. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Andrew told his brother Simon, We have found the Messiah, the Christ, and he brought him to Jesus.
Amen. Our prayer of spiritual communion for those watching at home who are unable to receive it this time. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May communion and your sacraments strengthen us, O Lord, so that by the example of the blessed Apostle Andrew, we who carry in our body the death of Christ may merit to live with him in glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. 
May God, who has granted you to stand firm on apostolic foundations, graciously bless you through the glorious merits of the Holy Apostle Andrew. Amen. And may he, who endowed you with the teaching and example of the Apostles, make you under their protection witnesses to the truth before all. Amen. So that through the intercession of the Apostles, you may inherit the eternal homeland, for by their teaching you possess firmness of faith. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God give you the holy prayer. And do thou, 